Hi, we're going to talk about the common ion effect. So a common ion is when you begin with a solution that has an ion in it, and then you add your acid or your base to it. And the key is the acid or the base that you add to this solution, to this water solution, also has that ion. Um, so here's the really big difference. You're not adding to pure water. Look at this reaction with me. Everything we've done up to this point is you have one acid or base, you add it to water. Um, and when we do the ice table, remember how we had um, always begun with our initial concentration, 0 0.30, water of course is a dash. It's like, hey, we added this to pure water. And so these are zero. Here's the difference. We're not adding to pure water when we have a common ion. I'm adding it to a solution that already has this ion in it. So I can't put zero. I can't put zero. Um, so let me say that again one more time. Instead of adding your aster base to pure water, you're adding it to something that's already a solution. And that solution has an ion in it that is also in your reaction. Um, so let's look at um, really the outflow. Here's the practical nitty gritty. What happens is when you add an ion, uh, so when you have, and I'm going to write the word common. When you have a common ion, so instead of using pure water, you're using a solution with some ion in it. Um, in the I, you have to put its molarity. You have to put its molarity at the initial. So that's the big change, is that we have to add um, that initial, I'm not starting with pure water. I actually initially have this ion floating in here. I have to put it in the I part of the ice table. So here's an example. I really think the best way to learn this is just do a problem. Um, we are going to add a 0.3 molar formic acid right here to, instead of just saying I add it to water, we're going to add it to a 0.1 molar solution of sodium formate, okay? So I'm gonna have a beaker that I've already put some powder, some sodium formate into it, and I've done the calculation that that salt is a 0.1 molar. Now, remember the sodium, I'm gonna write this right here. This is a salt that completely dissociates because sodium is 100% soluble. So you're gonna have the sodium ion and the formate ion. If I have a 0.1 molar um, solution of sodium formate, that means I have 0.1 molar of sodium, which is neutral, does not impact the, in the pH, so I can ignore that, it's a spectator ion. And it also means I have a 0.1 molar solution of formate ion, and that's what's significant. Now the problem wants us to calculate the pH. Now, I have put down, if I had pure formic acid, no uh, formate ion, no common ion. If I just took formic acid, added it to water, the pH would be 2.13, okay? If my molarity was 0.3, the pH would be 2.13. Um, keep that in your mind. So let's go ahead and set this up. We are going to have our 0.3 molar formic acid added to water. Water's a liquid, and so that's not a part of the equilibrium expression. I put my dashes. And right here, there's my common ion. We have 0.1 molar of that formate ion because we dropped this powder, we dropped the sodium formate into it. So this right here is your common ion. And notice I'm adding it to the I section. It goes to the initial. Now I'll have no hydronium, so that is zero. Everything else, we do it the way you know how to do it. We are going to consume some of this um, formate ion. So we'll put a minus X and then we will produce the formate. So we're going, sorry, consume the formic acid, produce that formate ion, plus X plus X. Now sometimes students will say, well, Mrs. Lab, how do you know to do a minus here and a plus here if you have a number right here? Well, there's no hydronium to react. So it has to react in the forward direction, but you're thinking really, really good. I want you to go back to Le Chatelier's principle. Um, remember from Le Chatelier's principle, equilibrium means equal rates and constant concentrations. Well, by me adding a concentration right here on the product side, it's going to shift the reaction toward the left. Now this is a common multiple choice question that a teacher can ask you. You could be given this and actually not have to do calculations and just predict what will happen to the pH. 
So here's how you think it out. Okay, I have something here that's unusual. I have a common ion. Because I have this concentration, it will shift the equilibrium toward the left, which means I'll have more of that um, HCO2H, less of the H3O plus. So I've been thinking, oh, if I have less hydronium, less hydronium, what happens to the pH? It becomes more basic, it goes up. So here's my prediction. I think we will have, because of Le Chatelier's um, principle, a higher pH because we'll have less hydronium because this will shift in the reverse direction because I already have a concentration right here. So a way that you could think it out if you're given um, a theory or a thought question. Okay, remember E, love this, just add I plus C. Um, so let's add this up. We'll get 0 0.30 minus X, 1.1 plus X. Okay, that looks new to us. And X, let's go ahead and write our uh, Ka expression. Ka will equal the formate ion times the hydronium ion divided by formic acid. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. We will have 1.8 times 10 to the minus four equals, right there, my formate ion, um, 0.1 plus X times hydronium is X divided by my formic acid is 0 0.30 minus X. Now, I can use my trick on this. When X is next to a concentration, as long as there is a factor of two zeros, 100, or more between the concentration and Ka, that X's value or is negligible. Um, so notice here, I'm at the tenths place. Here, I'm at the thousandths place. There is two zeros difference, which means this X is negligible. That when we determine the value of X, when I do 0.3 minus X, it's so small that it's still just 0.3 when I do sig figs. I can do it another place though. Check this out. 0.1 plus x, that's in the tenths place, this is in the thousandths place. We have 100, a factor of 100 difference, so that x is also negligible. Okay, so doing the math, I want to get rid of this denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.3 times 0.3, um, and then we are going to, so let's go ahead and do this, um, do 0.3, I'm going to write it out for you. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 equals 0.1 times x. Well, I still have to solve for x, so let's go ahead and divide both sides by 0.1. All right, now you can see that math clearly. 0.3 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 0.1 <gasps> equals x. And when we do that, we get, let me put it down here, x equals 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Well, X is hydronium, so we can just take pH equals the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. Let's go ahead and do the negative log of this. Negative log of 5.4 times 10 to the minus four. And remember our prediction. I said, because we have a common ion, this is going to shift in the reverse direction. We're going to have less of the hydronium, more of that formic acid. Here's the pH. 3.27.